Yeah, so the work I do is really around um, race and culture, uh, uh, trying to close opportunity gaps, trying to close disparities across different ethnic and racial and social class groups. But what's frustrating about this work, as I'm sure many folks who are, are watching this know and understand, is that there are so many factors that are beyond our control that influence children. Um, and we get those, we should try to fight for changing those issues. But my concern is what can we do in classrooms? What can we do in schools? And I think if we put more of our interest there, more of our, our, our resources there, provide the appropriate structures there, I think we can make some inroads in more than we know, and ways more than we know. Uh, and part of what would make this work with environmental so, so powerful was the fact that it wasn't, as I said earlier, a blame game approach. It was about leadership from, from what Geneva, from what Beth, and what Danielle did from the outset to say, look, uh, I want you to push this teacher a little bit. I want you to challenge this issue a bit more. Uh, we did some role play, which I thought was kind of cool, right? We, we had, we had uh, <laughs> during one session, um, a teacher played the role of a teacher responding to a very angry parent, which we know happens. Uh, and you could tell there was some discomfort in how the teacher responded, but I think we have to sometimes simulate these situations, give group feedback, and try to help teachers develop strategies. I just think there was an openness here that I don't oftentimes see at other schools. I think that, that there was something that happened here with the staff where they were receptive, uh, they, were, they were wanting to be better, and one of the challenges that I face when I walk in other schools is that there's a real entrenched, what I call pedagogy and pathology, uh, that is centered around this, this, this deep-seated set of ideas about just what these kids cannot do. And I always take that personal because, again, I know that that was my set of experiences in many ways, having grown up in, a, in an area just like uh, this one here in Englewood. But part of what I oftentimes say is that folks never gave up on me. Teachers never stopped believing in me. And that's the fundamental belief that you have to have. If you're going to do this work, you have to have a deep-seated conviction that with the right kinds of supports, these students can do much better than what many folks expect them to do. So this work was refreshing because there was a receptiveness. Uh, there was limited resistance. If it was there, I didn't see it or feel it. Uh, there was leadership who was who was really wanting to be um, sort of challenged and pushed in terms of how they did this work. And the staff was phenomenal. That's where I give a lot of the credit to. The staff could have came in, they could have shut down, they could have disengaged, they could have, you know, turned up and, and, and been, you know, uh, dismissive of this work. But everyone came, I think, with the right kind of disposition, with the appropriate types of, uh, you know, mindsets to be moved, to be informed, and to walk away feeling like, okay, here's something I can try different. Here's something I might do better. That is half the battle right there.